packing the Royal Albert Hall, thousands of young people attended the national rally of the United Nations Association. The Prime Minister, in emphatic terms, gives a solemn warning for the future of mankind. As Prime Minister, I wish to say, quite simply, that is, is the firm intention of His Majesty's Government to make the success of the United Nations the primary object of their foreign policy. <laughs> We've come to a period in history when mankind must either set up an institution of this kind and not only set it up but make it work or face consequences so appalling that the mind shrinks even from contemplating them. Atomic energy has been liberated and that fact makes war merely a form of suicide for mankind. If war is to be avoided, there must be in the world something to do in the future what war has often done in the past to make great decisions between nations. And in order that it may not become impossible to make these decisions, there must also be a means by which different countries can learn to work together for the benefit of all. And that is what the Charter has been made for to maintain international peace and security and to promote the welfare of all peoples by international cooperation. Representing the United States, Mr. Stettinius champions the United Nations Charter. Last time, the United States failed to join the League and other nations who did join failed to use the League as it should have been used. Now, after a war more devastating and widespread than the last, we have made a new beginning. Clem Attlee and Anthony Eden know, as well as I, that there were many disagreements at San Francisco, but those disagreements were resolved. The disagreements which arose at the Council of Foreign Ministers recently will also be resolved for the same reason. And that reason is that it is, it, is, it is in the vital national interest. But I know that the real people in America believe in you, just as I hope and believe that the real people of England believe in us. Mr. Eden urges the youth of the world to safeguard the future which belongs to them. We are met here tonight to resolve to give the utmost support in our power to this endeavor to make good use of what I have previously called and now repeat is the world's last chance. There is no dispute in this hall, as I believe, tonight, as to the need for a world organization. It, it is indeed indispensable to the peaceful ordering of the modern world. And if the modern world cannot order itself peacefully, it will assuredly destroy itself utterly. The task that confronts the world now, economic, financial, industrial, are immensely formidable. We have no chance to solve them unless we can have conditions of peace and a measure of confidence between the nations. 